Hey, what's up, brothers, and welcome back. <laughs> yeah, let's just do it, yeah. On September 2nd, we got a new update on a returning brawl veteran, number 32, Ike. Ike's side smash attack is extremely powerful, but it leaves him open, so you need to read your opponent's moves carefully. You can choose between his Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn costumes. Now with Ike, uh, Ike's a very interesting character. I like playing him in Smash 4, and yeah, I'll play him sometimes. Updates continued on September 3rd with the returning Brawl veteran, King Dedede. He's not very fast, but he's one of few heavyweight fighters with a good recovery. Apparently, a defeat by Kirby inspired him to train hard and learn a move called Hovering, which allows him to float after taking a deep breath. Now, uh, King Dedede, I considered him one of the more unrewarding characters to play in Smash 4, because, like, you're playing a really hard character who really has almost nothing going for him, so yeah, I probably won't play him that much. There were two updates on September 4th, the first being another music update as always. You can now listen to Fortress Boss Super Mario Bros. 3. Enjoy this arrangement by a Akihiro Honda while reminiscing about the bosses that have tried to stand in Mario's way. Now this song, really solid song right here. I really, really, really enjoyed this song. Now the second update we got was for a stage, Final Destination. Though this is a simple stage with no hazards or floating platforms, the background has been updated for this game. Make sure you don't get too distracted and get defeated. Now, uh, Final Destination, I'm sort of getting really bored of this stage because, like, whenever my friends want to play with me competitively, we just... They just either pick Final Destination or, like, some Omega Form stage instead of picking, like, one of the many other tournament legal stages there are, so, like... But this new design looks very good. On September 5th, we got an update for a new Pokemon, Alolan Executor. Check out this tall Pokemon. It may seem like it just gets in the way, but it can actually make it harder or easier for you to get a KO depending on where it's placed on the stage. Huh. <laughs> Memes. Week 2's updates began on September 9th with an update regarding returning melee veteran number 14, Bowser. Who's the greatest nemesis of all? It's King Bowser. In Super Smash Bros., his power and weight make him a reliable fighter. Use his fire breath to keep opponents at bay, then use his damaging attacks to launch them off the stage. He transforms into Giga Bowser for his final smash and delivers a super powerful punch. Now, Bowser was always a character that I like to play. My friend also likes to play him a lot, and like Bowser's just a really fun character overall because of Bowser's side and many other things. September 10th was another fighter update regarding a returning Brawl veteran number 43, Toon Link. He's smaller and faster than Link, his bombs explode with a unique anime style. For his final smash, he emits light from his left hand, and any opponents hit by it are trapped in the Triforce, subject to a punishing gauntlet of attacks. Now, I was never really interested in Toon Link, but my brother really likes playing him along with Link, and it's probably going to be annoying to have to deal with him because he spams bombs and arrows all the time and up smash, but that's pretty much all you have to do with Link to be good. On September 11th, there were two updates, the first being a new music update. You can now listen to Pikmin main theme. Doesn't it bring back memories of that title screen with all the Pikmin swaying? Please enjoy Hideki Sakamoto's arrangement. Now, I never really liked Pikmin music, but this remix makes it sound almost tolerable. The other update we had was on returning Brawl Stage, Summit. This stage is so exciting. When the summit of the mountain clears up, you can slide down the incline straight into the ocean. There are tons of details to take in. The aurora floats over the mountaintop, a polar bear with sunglasses and swimming trunks swims in the ocean, and there's even a mysterious fish that tries to eat all the fighters. Now, this stage was really fun in Brawl when I was playing casual matches with my friends, and like when the fish came out and like ate them, it was so funny. So yeah, I'll be looking forward to playing it in Ultimate. On September 12th, we had another fighter update on a Smash 4 DLC character, number 60, Ryu. Ryu is a special character. You can use directional command inputs to trigger his special moves. Executing moves like his Hadouken and Shoryuken with the command inputs from the original games will raise their power. You can even use a Shakunetsu Hadouken by inputting left, down left, down, down right, right, then tapping the attack button while facing right. Now, um, Ryu was probably a very interesting character. Probably the most interesting character in Smash 4 um, because of the directional inputs. 
but uh, I never really enjoyed playing him, ex except when he came up in random, then I really enjoyed it. The final update of week 2 happened on September 13th, which was also the day of the Nintendo Direct confirming Isabel. It said you can now watch the reveal trailer all in a day's work. I will leave the link to my reaction and to the trailer and to the direct in the description. So, so uh, I was really hyped for this character. Week 3 updates began on September 16th regarding a newcomer, number 68, Isabel. Isabel joins the battle from Animal Crossing New Leaf. She uses various trinkets from around the village to battle. Her side special fishing rod not only allows her to snag and bring opponents closer, but, but it can also be used as a recovery move. Now, I was so hyped for Isabel because I really love New Leaf, and um, Isabel is just, oh my god, I can't even talk. I'm so excited for this character. On September 17th, we got a new update on a new assist trophy, Shovel Knight. Blue armor, horns, and a shovel. That's right, it's Shovel Knight. With his trusty shovel blade, he can bury an opponent in the ground or throw rocks as he digs. He may even dig up some food. Now, I don't feel like Shovel Knight cameos are anything impressive anymore because, like, they happen in every game, but it's still super impressive that an indie character can make it into one of the biggest crossover fighting games of all time that's owned by Nintendo. And, like, it's just so cool that it's Shovel Knight. September 18th had two updates starting with a music update. You can now check out Happy Home Designer title theme. Enjoy the arrangement by Kazumi Totaka, a staff member from the original game. Now this song, it's not really anything special, but like at least it's an, it's an improvement from the actual song. The other update was on a stage on it. Ness's hometown has a drugstore in the middle and houses on either side. Watch out for cars entering the stage from the right. They can hit you for 30% damage. Now, I was always really confused with Onet because like, I don't know how those cars can hit you because they're, they're right in front of the plane that you're on, so it just kind of made very little sense to me. On September 19th, we had another fighter update for a returning melee veteran. Number 23, Ganondorf. His new design matches his appearance in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now he uses his sword for all his smash attacks. He's a bit slimmer than he was before, but his warlock punch is devastating. For his final smash, he transforms into Ganon the Demon Ki King and quickly charges forward. Now, I really find it cool that he has his swords and he uses Beast Ganon for his final smash, and the fact that he's based off of Ocarina of Time, which, uh, I still think it's an overrated game, but it's still a good touch because that's how it was in Melee. And yeah, it's just really cool. This redesign just like really helps out Ganondorf a lot. For the final update, another fighter update happened on September 20th regarding returning series veteran number 8, Pikachu. This fierce fighter uses electric moves like Thunder Jolt and Thunder. Pikachu Libre is one of the alternate costumes, and you can tell she's female by the shape of her tail. Now, Pikachu was one of my mains in Smash 4, and I will definitely carry that over to Ultimate. He has extremely good smash attacks and jab locks and, uh, and normals, and Thunder is broken, so yeah, he's very good. Week 4 updates began on September 23rd with a new assist trophy, The Moon. From The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, this assist trophy will appear in the sky and slowly approach the center of the stage. When it hits, it deals a lot of damage to opponents nearby. I think that this is a really cool idea for an assist trophy, and it also leaves room for Skull Kid in the roster or as a boss because he's replacing him as the Majora's Mask assist tro trophy. I really hope Skull Kid's playable, but also the moon is also really funny because you just see that face coming at you in the middle of the screen. September 24th had a fighter update for us regarding a returning Smash 4 veteran, Mart's Echo Fighter Lucina. Lucina is Mart's Echo Fighter, so she shares most of her standard and special attacks with Mart. However, while Mart's attacks are more powerful when made with the tip of his blade, Lucina's attacks just as powerful whether you use the tip or the base of the sword. Wow, that's an error right there. Um, Lucina was one of my mains in Smash 4 because I thought she was easier to use than Marth and had more kill power, 
So yeah, I look forward to using her in Ultimate. I hear that she will be a very good beginner's pick. On September 25th, we had two updates. The first being a music update. You can now check out Battle Steven. Whether or not you struggle with Steven's steel type Pokemon, you're sure to enjoy Sochiabe's arrangement. Now, this Pokemon remix was godlike, and I love it, and I'm gonna listen to it right after this because it's so good. The other update was on a returning melee stage, Brinstar. This stage is an underground cavern on Planet Zebes, where the Metroid series takes place. Although the rising and falling acid at the bottom of the stage can deal severe damage, touching it when you're falling off the stage can actually help you recover. This stage is my friend Matrix Machine, aka Michael's favorite stage. It's his favorite stage, he always picks it. <laughs> on September 26th, we got an update regarding a new item, Death Scythe. You can KO highly damaged opponents with a well-placed smash attack from this scythe. A black aura will surround your opponent right before you attack, signaling an instant KO. Now, this is a very funny item when you see like Sonic or Jigglypuff or Ness or Isabelle carrying it. And it's gonna be so funny, even Peach even, it would be super funny to see any of these characters hold it, because like, they're so innocent and they're holding a thing that could kill somebody instantly. <laughs> the final update of the month happened on September 27th, with a fighter update regarding a returning Brawl veteran number 41 Lucario. Lucario is the only fighter whose attack power increases as it takes damage, a fighter that truly shines when in a pinch. Choose Lucario for a thrilling battle. Now, I don't like Lucario, but my friend Brett, he really does like Lucario because of like the high damage output, because of the aura and rage and stuff, and Lucario spawned one of my top quotes around friends that they meme around me. Aura and rage kills early. Wow, this video took me an hour and a half.